All right. Good morning. It's good to be here this morning. Excited for what the Lord is going to be sharing with us in worship and and the teaching and fellowship together. The last few weeks have been very filling and very uh, encouraging to me personally. And I've heard from others, too, that you're being encouraged and challenged in, in your walk and in the things the Lord has for you. So it's, it's good. That's where we want to be, is growing with the Lord. With the announcements uh, in your bulletin, we have the rummage sale. So there's still you know drop-off items downstairs for the shipment's mission trip. Um, and then the uh, daily bread. So following that, daily bread devotional. Youth group, Thursdays, 6.30 to 8, bring a friend. Going to be having that again this week. And then everyone's welcome downstairs again for prayer. We do prayer before church at 9.15 downstairs. Lift up needs in the body and in the community and in the service for the morning. Then uh, Church of the Week is Clarendon Christian Fellowship, LifeGate Church and LifeGate Church in Kentucky. So praying for those churches this morning. And then the Good News Banquet, if you'd be praying for the banquet, I think registration's closed for it. Um, right, Mary? Okay. But, yeah, but they, they want people to come. So check that out. Um, and, uh, you know, be praying for them also. And you can always support them on, through the website. And then um, another announcement with, or does anybody else have an announcement? Yes, Nancy. Oh, what you have to say is important. Good morning. Um, Secret Sisters will be having their annual luncheon March 27th. That's the last Sunday in March, and we welcome new people. I will be having um, more information next week out on the table if you aren't familiar with the program. It's part of our ladies' outreach, and it's a fun way to kind of support your sisters in this church by prayer and some other things that we do. So I do have forms in the back on the little table in the corner on the right if you've been in the program before and you want to fill out yours early, I appreciate it. And thank you. Great. All right. Any others? <coughs> okay. Um, so, as we um, go into the, the word or the, the psalm this morning and worship, we're not going to stand up as we normally do. Um, I'm going to read this psalm and then uh, the guys that were at the leadership meeting this week, the elders and deacons, we're going to start into the first song. We're going to stand and kind of lead into the first song. And then Isaiah will cue you know, the rest of the congregation to join in. So we're just going to start a little bit different this morning, but really want to share what the Lord was sharing with us um, this week and, and encourage you all with that um, example. So I'm going to start and read in Psalm 19, which I think, are we going to have Psalm 19 up there? It's okay if it's not. Okay, no problem. So Psalm 19, the heavens are telling of the glory of God. And their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Day to day pours forth, pours forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their utterances to the end of the world. In them he has placed a tent for the sun, which as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, it rejoices as a strong man to run its course. Its rising is from one end of the heavens, and its circuit to the other end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true, they are righteous altogether. They are more desirable than gold, yes, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, in keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Acquit me of hidden faults. 
Also keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not rule over me, and when uh, I will be blameless, and I shall be acquitted of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. When we play this song, we're just going to, in the very beginning, we're going to just play it. We've changed it, right? And oh, we're just okay. going to play the guitar. Okay, good idea. And let the men lead. So you're going to stand up. I'm going to stand up. We're going to lead that song, and then we'll join in on the chorus. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so we're just going to pray. Um, just the first verse. Maureen, uh, Maureen's daughter, Bethany, is is in the hospital right now, and it's it's a point where the Lord just needs to to do His work, um, and and we need to just pray for Bethany. Um, she's her her body is in uh, dire need of God to to move in her, and then. Uh, also, another lady named Sue Wangard, who has a severe, a severe cancer, um, and and we need to just be lifting her up too. But as we pray, um, just and then we're going to sing the battle belongs to the Lord. Just really felt like the Lord saying, sing that song with that intent, with with the the heart and the knowledge that God can do all things, and whatever battle we're in, He can He can bring it about. He can bring the turn. He can sway the tide and so um, but let, let's pray so Lord Jesus we know with without a shadow of doubt that you are the one who has overcome death and death where is your sting uh, we believe that by your power and your authority you can do all that we need Lord God and we lift up these two women to you this morning. We, um, we know that you can do it, Lord God. We know that you can heal and you can overcome the natural order, the natural way, and, and make a new way. And we believe that, Lord, because we've seen the evidence of it in our own lives. We have seen you do what we maybe thought before was undoable, and you have undone what needed to be undone, Lord God, and, and you have redone uh, in your way, the way of truth, the way of life. And so we come on behalf of these two women and we lift them up, Lord. We come as your people, your sons, your daughters, praying out and just holding on to our corner of that blanket to, to bring them to you, Lord God, and to ask for your healing, to ask that you would do, Lord God, what we cannot and we believe you can. We ask you to touch their bodies right now that there would be change happening now, Lord God. We, we proclaim uh, that your healing and your, your way is right and, and that your healing is, is lifelong, Lord. You will bring yes. eternal life. And, and we ask for this, Lord God. We trust you and we know that this battle, both of these battles in every battle, belongs to you, Lord God, and we hand it over to you. We bow down at your feet. We ask that you would have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we just stay in that place with you, Father. We just stay in that place with you. Declaring that heavenly armor, declaring that the battle is yours, declaring that no weapon that's fashioned against us will stand, no weapon that's fashioned against the flesh can stand. Father, you are our deliverer, healer. Just stay in that. We just stay in that work. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, indeed, yes. As we were led Wednesday, the Lord put that into our hearts as men to sing that here. To be humble and to stand up before us and to, and to, and to sing out so our voices can be heard establishing that work. 
And we did that Wednesday at our meeting and God just met us. He came in and moved and we, we need that movement this morning. So as those men have stood and we've said we want to do that before us, let's lead into this song in that way. And then as we hit that chorus, let's rise together and let's just sing out together. But you're just going to hear an instrument strum and then you're going to hear our voices as we declare that in heavenly armor will enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. In heavenly armor will enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. Against us will stand. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. The power of darkness comes in like a flood. The battle belongs to the Lord. He raised up a standard of power of His blood. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory. When your enemy presses and hard, do not fear. When your enemy presses and hard, do not fear. The battle belongs to the Lord. Courage, my friend, your redemption is good. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory. Father, it is by your hands, by your hands alone, Lord, that every battle is defeated. By your hands, Lord, that we can stand, and by your hands, Father, that we move forward in these battles. Yes, indeed, in every way, Father, we praise you this morning. We've made that declaration as a people. We've said that together, and we've sung it aloud. Amen. We've said that our God is good, and he's faithful. He's strong in battle. He's mighty in battle. He's strong to deliver Let's continue to trust in him and hope in him. Let's worship him in that heart this morning. He's so faithful and so worthy to be blessed. So worthy to be blessed. And so worthy to be praised. Amen. So worthy. He is so worthy. Yes. So worthy. And we truly are a blessed people. Blessed are the people whose God is their Lord. And blessed are those who trust in him. Amen. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. All praise be to our God. The mighty is He to tear down the stronghold. The mighty is He to 
build our city Concrete defender of the righteous And everyone who runs to Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. All praise be to God. The mighty is He, to tear down the stronghold. Mighty is He, to build a city. A great defender of the righteous and everyone who runs. We run to you, Father. All praise be to the rock. All praise to his name. All praise be to the rock. Oh, he ever is the same. All praise be to the rock. All praise to his name. Mighty is he, mighty is he, to tear down strongholds, mighty is he, to build a city, a great defender of the righteous, and everyone who belongs to him.
Touch you 
are good, you are good When there's nothing good in me You are love, you are love You spray for all to see But you are light, you are light When the darkness closes in You are hope, you are hope You have covered all my sin You are peace, you are peace When my fear is crippling You are true, you are true You are my wandering You are true, you are joy You are the reason that I sing You are light, you are light You are lost to sleep
what is your name? What is your name? What is your name? Father, we thank you for drawing us into your loving arms. And in that embrace, you're speaking to our hearts and our minds. We commit ourselves to you and we surrender to you, Lord. Thank you for your resurrection for the life that we have in you thank you that you you cast away our sin as far as east is from the west Lord you deliver us you set our feet you equip us and you prepare us for the battles You've whispered into our ears and, and upon our heart the cry of victory. You've shown us the way. You have made the way. You have cleared the path. Lord, you help our feet to land in the right places. We declare that, that you are good, that your mercy is satisfying, your grace is complete. Lord, we are thankful. We are thankful, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for your, your will. said, if you love me, obey my commandments. Obedience. Father, we long to walk in your way, to walk in obedience. This morning, shape us. Transform our hearts, our minds, our way of thinking. Transform from the old to the new. Prepare, prepare us, Lord, for the day ahead. We're excited to be yours. We're excited to be in your kingdom. Help us, help us, Lord Jesus, to embrace your way and walk in it. If the Lord's been giving you something for the body, Specifically here just now, if you would come and be obedient in sharing it. The Lord wants to use us. He wants to make declaration. And if He's using you, it's important. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Um, in that last song, I just had this, you know, we, our, our songs are, all of them this morning are warrior songs, and we're all warriors, whether we feel like it or not. Um, we all have our inner battles. We all have our family battles. We may not speak them, but we, you know, we have them. And some days we get discouraged. And something just told me to go to Psalms, and it was like, okay, well, what am I supposed to, what Psalm? And then it was like, today's the 20th. Go to the 20th. 
And so I went to Psalm 20, and this is it. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. And we sang about Zion today. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. May, he shout for, may we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now this I know, the Lord gives victory, victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to his knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. And you know that, that saying that says, fake it till you make it. Trust it and believe it till you make it, because you will make it. Your fire may go out one day, and, but it's not gone. It just needs to reignited, a little bit different kindling. So just hang in there, coming from a person who knows. Amen. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Let's continue to trust in the Lord and listen as we, um, as we hear His Word, and, and we're going to pray uh, now for the kids and for the tithe and, and offering. Um, Lord, as we celebrate celebrate you and celebrate your truth uh, we ask that you would impact us from the oldest to the youngest that you would just invigorate invigorate those who teach this morning with the passion and the power of of the risen savior and and holy spirit that you would have your way instruct us prepare our hearts to receive from you and, and truth to set us free. We do lift up uh, the joy and, and the generosity that we can experience, Lord, in giving back to you and the blessing that you've given to us. We ask that you would make that uh, abound in a way that, that brings forth your kingdom and your purpose. We honor you, Lord God. We, we offer ourselves to you. We offer our children unto you, Lord, and we ask that you would use us in the most useful way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, before I start, let's go ahead and pray. Father, I submit this time to you. Lord, thank you that you lay out for us all the tools we need for life and godliness. Help us, Father. Teach us in our weakness, Father, how to take up those tools and and use them effectively in your kingdom. Help us, Father, be ready to repent today as we've all failed, as we've all come short. 
And so many are, are depending on our obedience. Help us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I had one way of starting this message, but the Lord wanted me to start it like this. So I'm going to declare two things from Scripture over us and then read another. So this is Matthew 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. That is God's declaration over us. You are the salt of the earth. You, verse 14, are the light of the world. And then Romans 10, 13. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him? in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good tidings. Amen. Well, that is super summarized what this message is about. So last week, um, Isaiah was teaching on roots and, and being root bound. Being bound up in roots in such a way that, that we're not planted properly. We're not, not ministering properly. We're not, not taking the life that God's putting into us and, and flowing it out into others. And branching out and stretching out with our gifts, our talents, and all those things. And our roots are tin, turned inwards. We have that picture. We have a picture of a root-bound plant. Great thing is I learned about this. I read more on it. You know, it's not a doomed plant. But it's doomed unless something happens when it's planted. Planted like this, it will not produce like it should. And it could die. Because the roots will just continue to turn inward. They have to be broken up, like Isaiah was saying. Broken up and, and dispersed into the soil. So they can do their job. And he, he made this statement, you know, root bound or root extended. You know, and that was really solid for me hearing that. I've been asking the Lord, show me, Lord, show me my roots. Show me the roots, Lord, that are not stretching out. The roots that are, are turned inward on me, that I've made my, my salvation about me, that I've made my faith about me, that I've made my, my walk and my ministry to others about me. That's all, that's all our roots being turned inward. Before that, we heard from Mike on being a disciple. You know, am I a disciple? And am I discipling others? You know, God's encouragement to us and, and Mike's example of the third team on a football field, you know, of the refs, or they're you know, making the calls on, on whether the game's being played right and, and keeping order and keeping the game moving in the right direction. And the Lord was showing with me in, in worship. You know, what was the first thing? You know, Mike just prayed it there at the, at the end. Christ, the, the risen Lord, right? After the Lord was risen and he's talking to Peter. What was the first thing he told them to do? Feed my sheep, right? Feed my sheep. Extend your roots outward. Give what I've given to you to others. And when we were praying downstairs this morning, I prayed something different that I've never prayed before, but that, that our work here as a church, that our work would be needing solid food. They would be doing work that needs us to be eating solid food, not just milk. Right? What the Word teaches us about that is that, that if you're just living on milk, then you need again to hear about salvation. You need again to be reminded of who you are in Christ. But we're to be moving past that. We're to be moving past that into extending our roots outward and giving life to others. And when we do that, there's friction, right? When the, we're stretched and we have to go to the Word. We have to be, be empowered by the Word. Empowered by the Spirit. 
taught by the Lord how to minister. You know, when you're going out, when you're stretching out into something that's not comfortable, not where your roots have been, and a lot of times where you don't want to go, you, your dependence on the Lord grows. Your dependence on the Word grows. If you've struggled like me to be dependent on the Lord and dependent on the Word, it's because I'm not stretching out. I'm not putting myself out there and being vulnerable, being humbled. What's this about discipleship? Discipleship is spiritually meaningful relationships. Spiritually meaningful relationships. Okay? It's, it's getting past talking about the weather. It's getting past talking about I'm good, you're good. Right? It's getting into real relationships. Real growth. Real trust. We're, we're instructed, we're taught by the Lord as he was leaving. He says, go and make disciples, right? Go and make disciples, the Great Commission. That requires us to be a skillful relationship builder. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Being a skillful relationship builder. God requires us to be a skilled relationship builder. Right? That's our roots going out. What else would our roots be doing? What else would our roots be doing except going out to others as the Lord instructs us and as he instructed Peter, feed my sheep. So we're going to be looking hard and it's going to, it's going to hurt to look at some of the relationships that we failed this in. Some of the relationships that we've written off. Though we said, we just don't get along. They just don't hear me. I don't hear them. We're just better not talking, okay? Easy one to look at is family relationships, right? Family relationships that should be, you know, you know, you have that conviction that, that I should be doing what I can to reach this relationship. Whether it's my children, whether it's my parents, whether it's my extended family, Um, and I might get this quote wrong, but I'm pretty sure I got it right. Um, Ray Miller, this is something the Lord reminded me of this morning. Ray Miller would always say that the difference between winners and losers is that the winners have thrown away the excuses. So if you want to win in these relationships, throw away the excuses and die to yourself and humble yourself. We're going to be looking at passages that teach us that. So here's a test, you know, and, and literally do this. Because if you don't do it, then you're, you're, not, you're not building a bridge of trust in the relationship that can handle any load. And you'll just be, you know, there for weather. You'll be there for checking in. How well do your loved ones hear from you? How well do your loved ones hear from you? You should ask them that. You know, as, as Victoria and I were married and working out our marriage, one thing became really clear, like, immediately, you know, after the, you know, the flowers of getting married and, you know, all that. And then, you know, as soon as you get married, the enemy wants to break you up and wants to tear your marriage apart. And one thing that the Lord taught me was that my communication style with Victoria was not working. I wasn't at the point that, that point that I could say that it was my fault. I, it just clearly wasn't working, right? I would say things, and she would break down and, and be crushed, and, and then I'm left there with somebody who's a puddle who can't even argue with me, right? It sounds harsh, right? But that's part of how I learned to communicate. That's part of how I learned to, to discuss things. You know, it was like, you know... You bring your point, I'll bring my point, and let's like, who see who wins, you know? And she was not raised like that. She was not raised that that's how you have communication about things, you know? I had to stop, because she would say, she would say things like, 
you know, the way you're speaking to me tells me I'm worthless. The way you talk to me tells me I don't matter, that I mess everything up. And that's never anything I literally said, and it's not, not wasn't in my heart that I thought that of her, but that's what was communicated by how I talked to her. And I was responsible for that. So I had some serious work to do, and I'm still, still, I'm not there yet. I'm still working on it. But by God's grace, he's changed me a lot. Changed me a lot. And this is where we need to go. I need to change that. I'll tell you, it's like one relationship. The Lord is after all of our relationships. Our loved ones, we're going to read this too. Our loved ones, who are our loved ones? Mike and Isaiah, you can't talk because I'm here. Everyone. Everyone. Even our enemies, right? For God so loved the world. We're going to be looking at that in Matthew. So everyone is your loved one. And you are to have these patterns of relationship with all of them. That goes for your loved ones, your family members, your, your co-workers, strangers, those who think you're, they're the, your enemy. So building these relationships, right? Having these conversations that are spiritually meaningful is a big task, right? It looks like a big task. But the hope is, the hope in this is that there's a lot of work in us to do. A lot of work in you that you can do on your side of the relationship that will bring healing, restitution, and trust. And then move beyond that, right? That's the milk. That, that's, that's a relationship being reconnected like salvation. But God wants us to be doing the work of the solid food, right? He wants spiritual loads placed on that relationship. Meaningful spiritual dis, dis, uh, discipleship happening in that relationship. That's the feeding the sheep. That's the going out. Oh, man. We're not even in the scripture yet. So this is, you know, so <laughs> it's kind of sarcastic, but, you know, the hope is, you know, congratulations you know, if you, if you think that you know what's wrong in the relationship more than the other person, then congratulations, you have more responsibility to fix it. Right? Otherwise, you choose self-righteousness. That's the option, right? Self-righteousness and pride or humility and service. And dying to yourself for others as someone did. So this is a very, very real thing to test with your loved ones. Because if they don't hear from you, some transformation of your roots needs to happen. Right? And consider all of your relationships. Because transforming how you talk to people and your heart for people will affect your family members, co-workers, strangers, and those who believe you're the, they're the, your enemies. And don't write anyone off. Christ didn't write us off. He said, forgive as you've been forgiven. Let's go to Philippians 2, 1 through 11. Yes, Lord. Philippians 2, verse 1 through 11. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in Spirit, intent on one purpose. 
Do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, guard, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself, taking the form of the bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also God highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee will bow, and those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Amen. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Here and there, regard others as more important than yourself. Regard others as more important than yourself. Let's go to Matthew 5. I'm like super parched this morning. Now again, hear these in, in the context of relationship, in the context of ministering to others and dying to ourself. I'm going to read the first part of Matthew here and then give kind of a preface of the middle and then read the end. So Matthew 5, 1 through 20. And remember Jesus was coming, ministering to the disciples and the Jews, and they were expecting the king to come for battle, right? They're expecting the king to come and conquer the Romans, right? And he's constantly, constantly combating that, teaching even the disciples why he's come. You know, it seems like along the way they, they keep being like, you know, who can we take out? Like, who can we take swords to, you know? Lord, call down fire on these people, you know. And so this, this is the heart of the Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the hearth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have, persecuted, have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is in heaven, for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished. However, whoever then annuls one of these, uh, uh, the least of one of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you then, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. We hear in there all these ways that we're to minister to one another. In the next sections there, the Lord says, Do not be angry with your brother. Do not commit adultery. Do not make oaths. 
Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Then in verse 38, let's pick up there. You have heard it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. If anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let him have your coat also. Whoever forces you to go one mile with him, go two. Give to him who asks of you, and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you then, if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? If you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Therefore, you are to be perfect, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Amen. Amen. So this is a tall order, right? These passages challenge our understanding, challenge our reality of our ability to minister to others. Our comfort zone of our roots being turned in on us or going out to others, even our enemies. Serving, being selfless and humble the way he's taught us by his example. Some of the words we heard through that passage that, that give a picture of relationships, how we're to walk in relationships. Peacemaker, gentle, merciful, persecuted, salt of the earth, light of the world, make friends quickly, turn the other cheek, give, love your enemies, not just your friends. So again, we're looking to be skilled relationship builders so we can have meaningful discipleship with others. That's why we're here. That's what we're to be doing. That's our roots going out. But how can we be salt if we're not ministering and pushing beyond what's comfortable? And how can we push into spiritual things and relationships if we haven't built trust that can take that load? I heard a teaching once. Um, again, one other thing about this is it's easy sometimes when you hear something to say, oh yeah, I can think of Jim really needs to hear this message or Sally really needs to hear this message, you know. But allow, the, allow this message to be just you and the Lord and your responsibility to him and your faith and your relationship with him. So the teaching that I heard was on how relationships are like bridges. And depending on how strong your, your bridge is with a person, the trust you've built with that person, it can take a certain load, right? It can take hard conversations, it can take hard events, and not break under that weight. So let's look at this picture, and then I've got this story about the picture, and gives just some good real-world examples it's interesting, like, three-quarters of this thing is just perfect. So, we've got a problem. We've got a problem. This is in Ghana. Uh, I don't remember when it was. I didn't really look at the date. I just found this story online, and it was in English, so I thought that was great. <laughs> so... Here's the story, um, and I'll try to skip sections that aren't super helpful, but a steel bridge that links Mamieso to other communities in Wasa municipality in the western region has collapsed. And this was the bridge. The bridge, which is over River, River Meme in Mamieso, connects the community of Wasa municipal capital and the sprawling commercial town. The accident happened last Sunday morning when a heavy truck carrying construction boulders for construction of the 55 kilometer Coca Road in the area was crossing the bridge at Mamieso. Right? So, I mean, good intention, right? Trying to, to build a road, uh, putting heavy load across the bridge, but the bridge couldn't handle it. 
The long, heavy-duty truck had reached the middle of the bridge when it caved in, trapping the truck and pushing the bridge deep into the river. In the meantime, the contractor working on the road project has been able to retrieve the truck, but the bridge is out of use. Sound familiar? Relationships? Speaking to the Daily Graphic, Helena, the chief executive, said the assembly in collaboration with Ghana Highway Authority had made a diversion through an alternate bridge for temporary passage. She said it's important that the bridge was fixed um, before the onset of the rainy season. Quote, River Mamieso is at a low level at the moment. We are entering the rainy season, which calls for fast action to be taken to rectify the situation. The alternate bridge created was open to traffic last Tuesday morning, but it is, full, it is small, it's for small vehicles only, not for heavy trucks carrying construction materials, cocoa, timber, and the like, she said. This bridge is also important because that community was, was almost cut off from healthcare facilities and the markets that, that these people go to from this um, riverine, I'm not sure what a riverine is, never heard that word, and farming communities. So the good news was from the engineer that the bridge is not completely damaged, but it can be salvaged. And they're, they're making the contractor that broke it fix it. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, MCE said the bridge is a vital link connecting the 55 kilometer Coca Road in the municipality, which is continued and ended in these two areas. Uh, the road provides easy passage to these communities. <laughs> very hard words to say. The stretch is therefore very important and also strategic. She assured the people of the affected communities that the bridge would be fixed as soon as possible to end the inconvenience. Quote, I understand how you feel over the collapsed bridge and the difficulty that you're going to face with your travels and accessing market centers and cocoa depots. Let me assure you again that the Ghana Highway Authority will soon have the bridge repaired as we wait for the contractor to install a new one, she said. Amen. So, uh, I wish I could follow up and you know, see how it went, but some things to notice here, right? There was a bridge, there was a weight placed on the bridge. It's funny, the back of that truck, I looked up what mammoth, that's mammoth, right? Mammoth truck. Huge load was put across that bridge. Clearly couldn't handle it. And part of our, part of our job in asking our loved ones, can they hear from us? Part of that responsibility of us is testing that bridge. It's testing. How, how much weight can this bridge take? You know, when this bridge collapsed, you know, another smaller bridge had to be established that couldn't take the weight of real work, right? It could just do kind of the essentials, right? Hi, how you doing? Good morning. And that type of thing. It couldn't handle any real weight. And that wasn't good enough, right? This bridge was vital to be reaching these communities with what they need for life. Vital. Our communication with people is absolutely vital. And whatever, you know, th this gets into different things. This is not just relationships where you've had an impasse or you've had something that's broken down. This might be your habits in how you talk to people at all. You, you, there, you might not be, have a vision that you're supposed to be building these bridges with people, having these meaningful conversations with people that establish bridges. You might be totally fine staying on your side of the, the river. But Christ said, feed my sheep. He didn't, he didn't want us to feed his sheep with the weather and good morning. It's vital. This bridge was vital. Let's see if I can stick with my notes here. So keeping this picture in mind and, and keeping this understanding, this is not just, you know, this is not just where our roots have gone out and got clipped or, or where we had an altercation with someone. This is, this is some of our roots that need to go out for the first time, creating new habits of talking to people, loosening our tongue. Like we read earlier, how will they hear if we don't speak? We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth to speak the truth. To testify. So let's read Romans 12. I 
again, this is building. This is more of, you know, God's tools for us. We talked a few weeks ago about the blueprint the Lord gives us. The Lord gives us so many blueprints in the word of relationships and how to build relationships well, how to die to ourselves, humble ourselves, and be ready to minister to others. We've got to get our roots broken free for this. Romans 12, Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world or this pot. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. For just as we have members in one body, and all members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, individually members of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, and each of us is to exercise them accordingly, if prophecy according to the proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, or he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. Not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. 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 You hear that? You hear that challenge of our roots? Breaking out? Breaking out and breaking forth into this work? These are instructions for how to die to ourselves. How to die to ourselves, die to our pattern of communicating, die to our pattern of talking. To ask hard questions about how others receive us. To look at whole groups of people that we might not be trying to, to be received by at all. And change, be transformed. You know, even, even the, when the apostles were, were said they're going to go before rulers, they were said, told not to even worry about what they would say, right? That the Holy Spirit would give them the words. That's how desperately the Lord wants us to be ready. Don't worry about what you'll say. Start saying it. Loosen your tongue. Prophesy. Some of these things we, we just read. Prophesy, serve, teach, exhort, show mercy, love without hypocrisy, be devoted to one another, give preference to one another in honor, contribute, be hospitable, bless and do not curse, rejoice, weep, be of the same mind, not haughty, be at peace, do not take revenge, overcome evil with good. What words here, you know, what words here in this message is the Lord rubbing on your heart? Trying to make a, trying to make a place for? Where your heart's been hard or shut off to how you serve others? The expectations you have in your faith. It's what 
Isaiah was talking about last week. Our faith, our understanding, our man-made faith, that's what Jesus was talking about in the Beatitudes there. Crushing their idea of man-made faith. Their idea of what they were supposed to be doing and looking for in the Savior. To be transformed. By His power, we can be transformed in this. We can be transformed in our expectations of ourselves. We can be transformed in the opportunities we give ourselves to minister to others, to build those meaningful relationships, spiritual relationships. You know, one big thing for me, and others can probably relate, that, that this message is really hitting home with, and there's, you know, Lord had me say something to Josiah the other day. You know, my, my bridge with Josiah is one of my children, and it's true with my other children too, but my bridge with him of, of do it this way because I say so, that bridge is going away with his childhood, isn't it? So that river's rising for me. And I'm like scrambling a little bit now, feeling frustrated with myself that I haven't built a, a strong relationship that I, that I know how I'm going to relate to him when he's a young man. I've just failed in that. I've just, you know, the other day I just had to ask him for forgiveness because I've been, you know, having just critical of things he's interested in and stuff like that. And, and I realized it was just coming from an anxiety of him having interests that were beyond either what I was interested in or, or that I could just see you know, his bridge being built in these other things and I'm like not there. I'm like, Oh, so I had to apologize to him for, you know, just little comments, nothing like real attacking. He's just, but he's felt it. I know he's felt it. <laughs> and that's one relationship, right? Where I'm like, ah, oh, this, this bridge, I, I, I failed in my responsibility here to some point, you know? And I, and I can improve. I can change and I can, I can work on that bridge, you know? And there's time for every one of those relationships. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the bridge has been broken already. It can be mended. But we have to have faith. It's going to take you know, something more than you. right? That's hard. It's hard work to do that. It's hard work to go after that relationship. It's hard work to die to ourselves and humble ourselves. We have to move beyond what's comfortable in the conversations that are beneficial and profitable, right? That's investment. You know, you don't, you don't invest in something by not putting anything into it. You invest into, into property. You invest into the stock market. You invest into people by placing wealth into them, by pushing yourself beyond what's comfortable, Let's look in Proverbs 19, verse 11. This is part of the humbling ourselves to one another. Humbling ourselves to one another and not, not taking up an offense. A man's discretion makes him slow to anger. And it is his glory to overlook a transgression. Transgression, other versions say offense. We right now are in a hyper-offended culture, aren't we? People are like falling over each other to get offended for things. Honestly. Right? I mean, you look at the can cancel culture, you look at people being offended for things that happened 200 years ago that they literally didn't have anything to do with or that other people didn't have anything to do with. 
I even look at my children in my house. My children, man, I've got to do some work there because my children feel like any, like if they bump into you the wrong way, like you offended me and you have to apologize and he didn't apologize and like about the smallest, smallest, stupidest things, you know? But that's, that's really not just them. I believe we're, we're, as a culture, moving way more into that realm of stupidity and foolish self-centeredness. That we can't just let something go. I mean, even saying that, it just sounds like, I just, I just feel like in like the atmosphere, just let it go. Like, no, we're not supposed to let it go. Like, it has to be like fleshed out and, and dramatized and, and struggled with. No, it really doesn't. The word says it's a man's glory to overlook an offense. Tom Owens, a lot of you know Tom Owens. I'm not sure if he said this first or someone else says, but he taught it to me. You know, one of those discipling relationships when I used to work with him. Um, and maybe you've heard this, but don't sweat the small stuff and it's all small stuff. You know, and as, as a younger man, you know, I thought it was a cute saying. I didn't, I didn't really understand how wise that really was at the time. And I've learned that it really is a very wise ask, uh, way to look at life. Right? I think he was encouraging me because I think it was the first time my car broke down, you know, and I barely had enough money to, to buy the car, let alone fix the car, you know, and I think that's what he said to me, and it didn't seem like small stuff. But, but it's very true. Don't sweat the small stuff. You know, overlook offenses. If you can overlook an offense and, and not let it cling to you, not let it grow into bitterness, and you just release that person... You know, it's, it's different if it's a sin thing, if, it, if they're living in sin and it's something that you biblically need to confront and approach them with, that's one thing. But Jesus didn't go around to all the people he knew were talking bad about him and make them apologize. He said they're going to hate you. Blessed are, those who or blessed are you that are persecuted in my name. You're not going to build bridges by being offended all the time. Amen. Well, there's this last, uh, last picture here. I feel like there was one other... So this is in Vancouver. This is the Manport Bridge. Uh, the town is Man, M-A-N-N, but really cool that it's called the Manport Bridge, right? Because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about relationships and building relationships. This is a 10-lane bridge. It's the widest in the world. You know, there are we read earlier that you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. How are they going to hear if we don't speak? How are they going to hear if we don't speak? We have to speak. We have to change. We have to change. To be transformed in our expectations of who we can speak to. How we can speak to them. How we can be changed. How we can show them we're changed. You know, there's trust. Some of those relationships, there's trust you're going to have to rebuild because you've screwed it up so many times with your side of the problems. We want this strong bridge. We don't want no bridge, right? No bridge is, is it's like Ukraine and Russia right now, two sides you know, of a river with their, their guns pointed at each other. Right? Don't you dare come across that bridge. I don't want you anywhere near me. That's one relationship. Or we can have like a, you know, the, the rope, rope bridge from like Indiana Jones, right? Like who wants to go out on that thing? Right? You'd be like, yeah. We're, we're barely at weather. <laughs> right? 
We need more than that, right? We need to be intentional and die to ourselves to build that bridge of trust. We want more than, we want more than a bridge that can just handle a small car, right? The Lord wants to transfer life between us. That's how he works. That's how he works. That's why he told Peter, go feed my sheep. Go make disciples. Go make bridges. Ask your loved ones those hard questions. That's the action step. That's the action step. Maybe as you do that, maybe as you do that with one person, one person the Lord puts on your heart, maybe if you do that with one person, it'll give you, give you faith that you can do with more people, that you can die to yourself and see life transferred, that your roots can go out in that way. Don't think about the whole world right now. That's, that's part of the vision. That's part of, of the goal and of the Great Commission. But think about one person the Lord's putting on your heart that he wants you to change how you talk to them. He wants you to die to yourself. He wants you to reach them with the word, with spiritual life. We're not promised tomorrow. That person you need to minister to is not promised tomorrow. The water's rising. Don't wait. Don't stay in your habits. Don't stay in your way. Go in the Lord's way. We read about it. It's dying to yourself. It's living for others. Young children, don't, don't, don't get bad habits. You don't, like, you don't like how you were taught how to communicate, how your parents communicate with you sometimes? Learn different. Learn by the word. Grow in your faith and your relationship with the Lord. Don't say, well, this is how dad did it. Or this is how mom did it. I'm just going to talk like this. I'm just going to, you know, treat people the way I was treated at different times. Don't do that. Don't do that. The Lord loves you. He loves them. He wants you to love them. Amen. Well, I'll probably need somebody to pray with me when I'm done. But if other people want to pray up here, you know, it'll be open. Amen. Let's close. Lord God, thank you for your love and your mercy. Lord, that your kindness leads us to repentance. That your kind way of always rebuilding the bridge with us every single time that we break it, Lord, you mend it. Help us, Lord, to do the same for others. To die to ourselves. To live for you. We love you. We exalt you. Help us, Lord, to take this action step. Take what you've been putting on our heart. Or take away the, the doubts of, of the work. Take away the, the fear of how we'll be received. Help us, Lord, to be faithful as you are faithful in this. Faithful in relationships. Transformed in our faithfulness in relationships. We love you. We exalt you. Keep us this week, Lord. Help us to work on this. In Jesus' name, amen.